The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to your Lord. When the Pharisees with some scribe who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees and, in fact, the old <clears throat> Jews do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are so many other things that they have traditionally observed and like the purification of carbs and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples do not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well, did Isaiah prophesy about your, your hypo you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but they, their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from, the, from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise your Lord Jesus Christ. In that first reading, we hear that they're sharing the law with the Jewish people. Now, if you look at Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you'll find, I believe, 603 laws that the Jewish people were to follow. All kinds of ritual washings, all kinds of rules and regulations. And then you add the Ten Commandments to that, you have the core of the Jewish teaching, which is 613 laws. Now, it seems as though originally, God's intent was to give them the Ten Commandments. They were all to be a holy people, a people set apart. And they did the golden calf, but God forgave them. But then they wouldn't enter into the, the promised land. They still did not trust God enough. And so therefore, all these extra laws were added. And the priesthood was reserved only to the Levites. Christ came to restore that. That's why we don't follow the 603 other penitential type laws 
but follow the Ten Commandments, God's original intent, so that we are indeed that holy people, the people set apart. Every Christian through baptism is priest, prophet, and king. It's true, yes, I'm an ordained priest, I'm a man. I only reveal that priesthood in a more external, visible way. But all of us as Christians are called to reveal that priesthood, that prophetic role, and that kingly, kingly role in the depths of our being. In that second reading, we hear that beautiful, beautiful phrase, be doers of the word. Have you ever run into that person that says, I hear you, I hear you. And then someone grabs you by the sleeves and says, I listened to you. We need to listen to the word of God. Because when we listen to God's word, it changes us. It transforms us. And there's no hatred left in our hearts. We're called to try and help the world understand how important it is to love God. Did you notice in the first reading when they said, you know guys, I'm telling you a little bit, a secret here. If you follow these rules, people looking from the outside in are going to say, boy, is this people smart. What an intelligent people. Because you see, if you followed those ritualistic rules about cleaning jugs and keeping things clean, very hygienic, you're likely to be a lot less sick, a lot more healthy. And so the people who followed those rules had that benefit of listening to God and benefiting from being and living in accord with natural law. Our world today, sadly, has abandoned natural law by and large. They think that whatever we think is right is okay. But that's not true. Truth does not depend on us. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus. And when we conform our minds and our hearts to that truth, it leads to joy, peace, tranquility, and the capacity to carry our crosses in our world of which we all have. This pandemic has been a huge cross for so many people. We may have lost someone we've loved as a result of it, or we know that someone's really sick, or we may lose someone we love. But the point being is that if we keep our minds and our hearts focused on Christ and the eternal reality that rests for us, we can endure these losses. We can endure these crosses because we know that it's about getting to heaven. And if we lose sight of that, we lose sight of everything. Sadly, it seems as though more people are concerned about making our earth perfect and somehow an eternal reality, when in the end it's not. We need to be environmentalists. We need to take care of our planet. We need to do all those good things. Why? Because it's better for those who are around us. So I'm not suggesting for a moment we don't need to be environmentalists or anything like that. But what I'm saying is that's not what is the most important thing. We hear the most important thing in the scriptures today. We hear the description of pure religion. Religion, the etymology of religion is telling. Re means to do it again, like you redo something, you do something again. <coughs> religion is the word that means to connect. So religion literally means to reconnect. Religion is the means in which we reconnect to that fractured relationship that sin caused between the human family and God. And when we embrace true religion, we're not concerned about ourselves, but we're concerned about helping other people. We're concerned about being a peacemaker, being a person of love. You know, I, I can't tell you how saddened I was in hearing one of our world's leaders get up and say, I will not forgive. We will no not forgive. Well, if we will not forgive, that means we're destined to hell because Jesus says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. See, that's what separates the Christian from everybody else in the world. We must forgive. That doesn't mean we forget. That doesn't mean that we make things justly happen and try and protect society, even if it means force. But we must forgive those so blinded by hatred who don't know what they don't know 
and try and help the world understand the superiority of Christianity. And I make no bones about it. I'm not embarrassed to suggest that Christianity is the superior religion because it's true. Because Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he loves us all. And he invites us to live not for ourselves but for each other. Why is there so much emphasis in our world today about not letting go of the past? Of trying to not forgive those relatives or ancestors of ours that did horrible things and make the, the current generation guilty for the sins of our parents or grandparents or whatever that is. That's not how Christianity works. That's not how the Jewish people work. It said you can't hold a child liable for the sins of their parents. But the sad reality is this. The sins of the parents, as the scriptures say, touch the third and fourth generation. Anybody knows and who's suffered through addiction in families knows how that tentacle of that darkness reaches down to second or third generations. But just a few sentences later, God says, but the justice of one person will reach to the thousandth generation. Our task is not to be consumed with the faults and the failures of past people. Our task is to be holy. Our task is to grow in our capacity to love and to help the world understand that they are loved by God. I'm of the opinion that these crazy terrorists and all these people who do these horrific acts of violence are the vast minority of people who are just so brutally deceived. If this were not the case, would you have all these Afghans trying to get out of that country? Most people just want to live their lives in peace and tranquility. And for our part, we must try and strive to help the world understand the truth of the gospel, that Jesus loves them. And the best way we can do that is by letting others see that we love them, that we live not for ourselves but for others, and that we pray that we might not be deceived by some ideology, but that we might be conformed to Christ and let that goodness come from our hearts. We hear Jesus warn us that unchastity, malice, licentiousness, all those horrible things come from the core of our being. <coughs> We're all tempted in such things. By the way, it is a cold. I was, my staff was all freaked out, you know, this, these cold symptoms. So, you know, the good news is at the school now we can test. So I was tested yet Friday. So, yep, it's just a cold, so not to worry. Isn't it terrible how worried we have to be about these silly things? They're not silly. They're serious things. I have a friend of mine who's potentially near death. But we, we pray that God will help us not be consumed by fear, but realize that if we put our faith and trust and hope in eternal life, we don't need to be afraid of anything, not even death itself. And guys, that's not natural. But that's the supernatural life that we're called to live. And we must try and strive to have leaders that understand compassion that understand respect for life from the moment of conception till natural death. That they don't run their life in just the service of some kind of political expediency, but rather they're rooted in the values of truth, goodness, and beauty. And to let those things from within our hearts be truth, goodness, beauty, chastity, love, generosity, all those fruits of the Spirit. For us, it's impossible. But with God's grace, it is possible. Let us pray that we respond to that grace God gives us so that we can be instrumental in making our world a more peaceful and loving place. And pray for our enemies. Pray for those who hate us. And pray that they repent so that they too may find Christ's love as well. That's not a natural opinion or a natural attitude to have. But it's the attitude that Christians, real Christians, are called to have towards all in this world. And maybe, dare I say, even especially our enemies, for that's how we can win them over through love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the only God who can save. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible, I believe in Jesus Christ.
And now we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, and that she may be a beacon of hope in these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, that they may strive to work together in the battle against this current pandemic, that they may never be motivated by greed or self-interest, but rather work for all that is true, good, and beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For David Miller, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the health care workers, police officers, and first responders who take the risk to deal with our current crisis, that God protect them and console them in all that they do and endure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may follow God from the heart and serve him out of a deep sense of gratitude for all God has given us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God and through the intercessions of our Blessed Mother supernaturally intervene and heal our nation and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may experience the fullness of peace and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all corruption in our world be uncovered, both in the church and outside her ranks, and that those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the difficulties and problems in Afghanistan and all those parts in the world that suffer so profoundly um, that aren't in the news, that God bring his healing presence and healing in those troubled regions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn can be found in the ritual song.